minutes past eight this morning. We're talking Camogie next with the former Galway star Ashton Connolly. First, here's the Galway boss, Cahill Murray, in pretty good form, speaking with Mark Trassi yesterday. What does this mean for Camogie in Galway? Because like you said, Galway in any code don't win many All-Irelands, even though the talent is often there. But this is the kind of stuff, this is the stuff that girls dream of. Yeah, this is the stuff the girls dream for us. You know, I think it's huge for Galway Camogie. I think not so much that we won it, I think it was the way we won it. You know, our match against Waterford, our match against Cork, our match again today, you know, it was unbelievable work rate, unbelievable intensity, unbelievable tackling. And, you know, I think it's the way we won it. You know, I know the crowd is a huge crowd up here from Galway and they really got behind the team and that was massive as well. And listen, it's at any six, seven, eight, nine-year-old looking at that is, is going to want to play Camogie for Galway and, and that's what we want, you know, it's, it's, it's super. Would you believe me if I told you there were some women from Connemara in the crowd as well of all places? Oh, I believe it, I said there was women from all over Galway and um, listen, we have a huge following, thank God, and, and listen, these girls deserve it because look, they're training six, seven times a week in the story, you know, they're putting in a huge effort, you know, we're, we're on the field three times a week and they're in the gym two or three times a week as well, you know, putting in a massive, massive effort and, and probably don't get the rewards they deserve, but thank God they got the rewards today. All right, we're joined by Ashling Connolly for a bit of analysis of this. Good morning to you, Ashling. How are you doing? Good morning, Jared. Great. How are you doing? Yeah, so um, Goway won this game with uh, a blast just before half time, kind of the first half championship minutes where they just established a, a lead that Kilkenny were never able to get back into it. What allowed them to suddenly put the burst of 2 2 or whatever it was in those final few minutes of the first half together? I think they just took their chances and they absolutely ran at Kilkenny. Like coming into this game, talk was about Kilkenny forwards, how they're lethal, how they're deadly, how they've scored such and such in every game. And there was little talk of the Galway forwards. But actually, it was the Galway forwards, in particular the Galway full forward line, who ran riot. And in Carl Murray's pre-match interview, he was asked the question, what's it going to come down to? And he answered, work rate and the team that takes the most chances. And Galway certainly took their chances. The two goals... That like Ailish O'Reilly got two goals and her first goal was after 90 seconds. So that really set the tone. It got Galway comfortable. And then from there on, any chance that they took, they took their goal chances. Like they really ran at them. Whereas Kenny had unusually no goal threat. Like they, you know, in, in previous matches, their sharpshoot at Dalton averages 1 3 every game. You know, Denise Gall, Katie Power, Miriam Walsh, none of them had goal threats. And that was the difference at the end of the day. Um. Were you confident heading into this game that it was going to be a victory for, for Galway given Kilkenny's recent record in all Ireland finals? Yeah, I was, Ger, because one thing that is easy lead up to the all Ireland final, like they weren't really tested since the league final against Galway. Um, so the first round of the championship, they had a competitive match against Galway and Galway lost. However, then they had Wexford, Offaly, Limerick. They all, they more or less hammered these teams. And even in the semi final, against um, Tipperary, they they won well, won by six points. Whereas Galway, on the other hand, had a real scare against, you know, the upcoming Waterford in Thurles in the quarterfinal. They were down by four points and, you know, it could have gone either way, but they grinded it out and went, won by six points. And then in the semi-final, they had a really, you know, tit-for-tat battle with Cork, only winning by a point. So I thought that Pekini are going to come into this game a little bit rusty. Um, and also... Galway was one thing that stood out from this year versus other years was their mental strength. So in the league final, Kilkenny came back at them, scored two goals from Rand Dalton, but they, they didn't uh, falter, they didn't lose their nerve, they stuck to the game plan and won it out. And that was seen again in the in the quarterfinals when Waterford were winning the halftime, it was seen again against Cork in the semi finals when they came at them. So the mental strength that Galway have shown this year was something that was unique and different to them this year. So for that reason, and for the easy run-in with Kilkenny, I thought Galway were in a great chance. Um, and luckily, it paid off. It was brilliant to see for Galway Camogie that they won. Yeah, that, that mental strength is something that's been touched on in the aftermath. Cahill Murray said that he used the collapse in the intermediate final in the dressing room uh, in the immediate build-up to the senior final. And I guess he was a little bit shocked by what happened there. But I guess the, the senior team you're saying had that reservoir of, of courage and, and that kind of mental strength there already. Yeah, and I think as well that, you know, the loss of Tara Kinney, you know, to your team player who who's, you know, a steady cornerback and who's always a fantastic cornerback and, you know, did a cruciate injury like nine or ten days before the game, which is very, very hard to take. And, you know, you, you heard from the players after the match that they all mentioned that. Their Dervin mentioned it when she was lifted to the Duffy Cup. So I think that as well as the loss to, the, you know, the intermediate drove them on was an extra little, um, you know, pep in their step going out onto Crow Park. But yeah, definitely the mental strength this year is something I'm sure that they worked on, having, you know, narrowly lost semi-final defeats in the past.
past um, and maybe it's something that he can need, need to, to work on having lost, you know, the three All-Ireland finals now in a row, you know, the last two by a point and yesterday by six points. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be heartbreaking for them. You know, it's going to be hard for them to, to pick up the hurl again next year and, and come back at it. But you, you would wonder was the difference on the day, you know, the mental strength because, you know, all those players are fantastic. They're very skillful. You know, they, they match themselves there on that. But the extra person is, you know, the mind is like an extra person inside your head telling you things. And if that person isn't, um, you know, 100% and if it isn't backing you, well, then that's where, that's where things can go wrong. And luckily the girls in Galway, they were just so steely. They were so strong. You know, in the second half, they can did rally, like, they got seven out of nine out of the nine scores in the second half, but you know, kudos to um, Galway. They just they didn't falter and they kept the scoreboard taken over. And for a finish, they scored four points on a trot without um, without kick any score. So they finished really, really strong. In terms of individual performances, where does Neve Kilkenny's rank in terms of Great Hall Ireland performances? Uh, Doctor. She was absolutely unbelievable. I'm, I'm actually in awe because every day she goes out and, um, you know, she's man-marked and, you know, she did player the match performance uh, in the semi-finals. Obviously, she would have been man-marked very tightly. And yet again, she delivers an unbelievable performance yesterday. It's one of the best performances, I would say, by an individual in an All-Ireland final. You know, so she, she got the first point for Galway. She was involved in Aylith O'Reilly's first score. She got a ball from scraps from the puck out and did amazing shimmies, dodged a few players and gave a brilliant hand pass to Aylith O'Reilly who, who struck it to the back of the net and did very well. She was involved in, um, you know, the second goal of Aylith O'Reilly was almost, um, gave her a great ball, a flick of the hurl and um, she buried it. And then when that when I was talking about that, when Pekini did come back in the second half, you know, it was her, it was it was her who you know rose the challenge and steadied the ship with two unbelievable points. Um, so you know she scored, you know, off her left, off her right, was involved in the goals, it was all over the pitch. Her work with was immense, getting eight hooks and blocks. She was just everywhere. And you know she's a big day player. And when she's going well, goal we're going well. And you know it's no surprise that she's such a good match performance that goal we won because. She is such a key cog in that team and she's been consistently brilliant for the last couple of years. It was her fifth All-Ireland final. She's lost three, one, one and before yesterday and now it's great that she's getting the credits that she deserves because she's one of the all-time greats. In fairness, um, you, you reel off that list of um, defeats as well from Neve's perspective to, to kind of uh, magnify Kilkenny's recent record in All-Ireland finals. It's mad that they've been so close so often and have yet suffered so many defeats. So it's three in a row, it's five of the last seven with one victory in the midst of all that. So they're obviously a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant team who are yeah. just short a couple of players to be a really dominant team. Yeah, and it is very tough. I lost two all Ireland finals in a row, 2011, 2012, by two points to Wexford. And it is, it's very hard and it's soul destroying. And, and you know, you give everything um, to it and your training and your, you know, you're full of confidence. Um, so it's going to be very hard for those guys. They're going to be hurting so much today. I guess, you know, one thing that I've noticed about Kenny is, is they're in all our finals over the last couple of years. They, they're not consistent over 60 minutes. They either are slow to start, which, which we saw yesterday, or they, the second half, they, they can go to sleep. So they they need to work on their you know their consistency over sixty minutes. I would say their mental strength and perhaps you know you know Anne Dalton can be slow to make changes. I noticed like you know she brought on two subs yesterday when they were trailing the game for the majority of the time. And um, you know in the against Tipperary, you know they were winning well. It was a, probably an opportunity to bring on players, give them big day exposure. Give, get them to you know get used to playing in front of crowds and some big matches and yet I think there's only two two subs that were brought on as well so um you know they are they're a great team and I'm sure they'll be back again next year um you know the forwards are amazing it's just I think that they need to work on consistency over 60 minutes and mental strength and maybe bringing on a fresh blood because you know that's it, it's not a team of 15 anymore you know every girl on the panel is is, is important um, and you have five subs for a reason. 
So, it, you know, maybe girls were getting tired there. Um, it wasn't going the way it should have gone for some girls out there for Kikini yesterday. So perhaps more um, integration of subs quicker would be helpful for Kikini. Do you think Anne Downey is still going to be manager this time next year? It's a good question. I was thinking about that after the game and if I was in her shoes and if I'd lost three All-Ireland finals in a row by, you know, by one point to Cork on both those occasions um, and then yesterday, you'd have to question, is there something that I'm not bringing to the table or is there something that I'm lacking that is not getting these girls over the line? Now, in saying that, Anne Dorton is an amazing servant to Kenny, you know, when she was on the pitch, she um, won 12 all Ireland. Now she's with Kilkenny and she has brought them on so much. You know, she's brought them to be, you know, the top two or three teams in the country in uh, the last couple of years. But I think if it was myself and I had three all Ireland finals and we didn't get over the line, like, there's something that I just am not able to deliver and can't get them over the line. So I don't know if, if she's going to be there or not. And in saying that, She's ruthless and she is so hungry and she wants it so bad for those girls and she gives everything to take any Kamobi. But I wouldn't be surprised either if she stayed on and said, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to try and, and get this silverware for the girls. But it might be time for, you know, fresh blood and a uh, different voice and new ideas at this stage. Uh, one last question for you. Obviously, um, it was nearly a crowd of 25,000 and yeah. that, was, that was a big target for everybody involved in Camogie in the country. Um, yeah. You can clearly see the success of the All-Ireland Final being a centrepiece for the LGFA and it's clear that the Camogie Association are, are building towards turning it into a showpiece as well. So 24,730 was the, the official attendance yeah. there on the screen for us now at the minute. That's great and the fact that the game was great. So definitely need a campaign to roll out behind this to make sure that there is um, some kind of legacy to this game and that it continues on into next year. Yeah, and one thing, Ger, that was brilliant as well about yesterday was that it was a great match to watch. Um, it made for great viewership. I think Greg Kelly did a great job um, at refereeing, to be honest. I know he handed out some um, questionable yellow cards, but majority of the time, the free count was down um, versus other finals and he let the game flow. And what that does is it makes for an interesting game to watch. It, and um, more people will tune in, more people will watch it again because it is a really, really strong game. And yeah, like when you look back at um, 2014, the, the record, the, the attendance was, you know, 12,000, 13,000 to about. So that's, that's, that's a shambles. So it's absolutely brilliant that now it's nearly up on 25,000. And credit to the Community Association, you know, they have Laura Delfoyle doing the social media and she's doing a really great job on it. And I think, you know, now is the time to build on the momentum um, and to make sure that there's more bums on seats. And, and as you said, get out a campaign, get into the schools, get their, their dads bringing their, um, their girls to the matches and their sons. You know, and, um, you know, also because it's often the case you have the mothers bringing their girls, but it's so you want your dads, they'll bring their sons to the All Ireland final, hurling or the semi finals. But, like, if you want your girl to um, grow up and learn determination, determine resilience, um, learn focus, learn teamwork, learn team spirit, be, you know, resilient when losing and winning, you know, then you want, that, that, Komogi teaches you all those things. So I'd encourage, like, you know, any men listening to this, you know, to, to make sure that they get bring their girls, their cousins, their sisters, you know, and to those Kamogi games because and get them involved in it because it is a great sport and it teaches you so much things for, you know, I see myself it's taught me so much in my prof- professional career and it's helped me along so much in my professional career career, not just on the pitch. So, yeah, that's a great point. Um, yeah. So but yeah, no kudos. It's just brilliant to see for Galway Kamogi that and they they won, and I just say a last shout out to the management team like Cahal Murray, um, John Connors, and previous player um, Orla Kilkenny, who I played against. You know they have just given so much to Galway Camogie, and it's you know they've left no stone unturned, and it's just brilliant that and um, they reaped the awards on yesterday. Fair play, Jason. Thanks a million for taking the call this morning. Cheers. No problem. Thanks, Jared. Bye bye.